I just got out of Joker 2, which set off to divide fans. Is it the last Jedi of the DC universe? Hardly. But we're going to talk about the ending, the movie, my thoughts, and more. This is Digital Charcuterie. Put a smile on my face and hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Hit the bell, ding, 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 to stay up to date when a new video drops. Let's go. Hakeem Phoenix. He ups the ante in this one. I will say, I don't know if he's better in this one. I wouldn't suggest he's better. You want an Oscar? I want to say he's better, but he's definitely on par. There is a scene in this uh, movie. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! There is a scene in this movie in the courtroom where he puts on an accent that just... Brilliance upon brilliance. Let's get right to it, though. We're going to talk about the ending first. Let's get things... Let's kick it off with the ending of Joker Folia de, the sequel to Joker. Let's give the people what they want. This is controversial. It leaked over the weekend. We did a video on it then. We talked about it a little bit on our live stream Tuesday, but I'm going to go deep diving into this one right now because I think there's a lot more at play with this than, than we are led to believe. There's a lot more going on within this ending than we are given. First of all, the movie begins with an animated Joker uh, cartoon a la the old Warner Brothers uh, animation animated shows from way, way back in the day. The animation style is brilliant. It looks great. But it's Arthur Fleck is is trapped in a closet and the Joker mo is out just like this, the, the outline, the costume, if you will, the Joker is out in public doing the Joker things and Arthur gets out and they have a confrontation. And that kind of sets the stage to where we're going, which is this movie. The first movie is about becoming the Joker. This one is deconstructing the Joker. And how do you not, how do you undo what you did? How do you undo that insanity, basically? And the answer is, I don't think you can. But if you fast forward to the ending now, it ends not with animation, but there is an animated short at the end that Arthur Fleck is watching when he returns to Arkham. And that is a Pepe Le Pew cartoon. When it first happened, they're like, oh, Pepe Le Pew, he's been canceled. This is great seeing him again. Ah, un petit femme skunk. But uh, there is a verbiage, a verbiage echoed within that that says, my echo, my shadow, and me. My echo, my shadow, and me. And throughout the movie, we are given Arthur Fleck, we are given Harley Quinn, and we are given an inmate in the background for a couple of shots named Ricky, who always seems to be by Arthur Fleck's side, who has a distinct smile on his face throughout the film. We see the inmate is just always there in the background. The whole movie, my echo, my shadow, and me. And the movie is about that. And in my interpretation of the events that are going on, Joker is way awaiting the trial to find out if he is who he is. But then there's an explosion and he leaves He leaves the courthouse. There's a massive, uh, it's a car bomb goes off. He leaves the, the courthouse and he runs down the street. We've, we've seen, I think the first leaked images were of the, the other Joker who's dressed just like Joker from the first movie with him. You find out they take him. He, he leaves those people and he goes to the infamous steps from Joker 1 where he meets up with Harley Quinn. And in that moment, Harley Quinn breaks up with him. Just before that, we see Harley Quinn during the trial at her house, at her apartment, putting a gun to her head. I'm bringing all this up because in my mind, while I'm watching this movie, the entire time I watched it, I was like, Harley Quinn, I believe, was a manifestation of Joker. Joker manifested Harley Quinn into existence. Hallelujah, come on, get it. I think, and look, there are instances when Harley Quinn speaks with other people and does other things. I think some of those are happening. Some of those are not happening. I think when he's, when she speaks to his attorney, I think that that's Arthur Fleck having multiple personality disorder, which I think is what this is all about. And they're saying he doesn't. She's like, he clearly does. I think if you watch movies like Fight Club, like Identity, these are how it's playing out like that in his mind. This is, these are all of his. So you have Arthur Fleck is him. His echo is Harley Quinn in his mind. She's the echo. And his shadow is this inmate lingering in the back. My, I'm thinking, like for me right now, I'm going with that as part of his multiple personalities. That's somebody who's been lurking. That is the actual Joker. This whole movie is about Arthur Fleck trying to get rid of the Joker. And as we get closer to him getting rid of the Joker, we see that 
Harley Quinn is like, you're not who I think you are. I can't be a part of this. The echo's gone. So Harley Quinn is then gone. She, he, he banishes Harley Quinn from his mind. And then it's a matchup of who's stronger. Is it going to be Arthur Fleck or is it going to be the Joker persona that he wants? And the guilty verdict, the innocent verdict swaying, it's in the balance. He doesn't know what's going on. And ultimately, the Joker personality wins over and kills the Arthur Fleck personality. And all we have left is Joker. So whatever happens now in that prison cell is going to be Joker. There's no more Arthur Fleck. There's no more good guy. It's all just Joker. And it's all just bad going forward. And so he gives himself the smile at the end, like Heath Ledger, the Glasgow smile. He gives himself that. And there's a lot going on with this character who is not Arthur Fleck. But I'm going with that's all in his mind. You've seen the first movie. You know that he plays a lot of crap in his mind in that first movie. And I feel like this one's the exact same. We're being taken on a tale uh, that's not totally truthful. And the instances of Harley Quinn, are, he's built up in his mind. And when she breaks up with him, that's when he's let that personality go. And all that's left is Joker now. And it's Joker and Arthur and Joker and Arthur. Da, da, da. And at the end, Arthur is gone. And Joker takes over a standout for me in this movie wasn't one that i expected but brendan gleason crushes it he plays like the fine line of friend and arkham asylum officer he, he has that fine line where you're like oh man he likes i think he genuinely likes arthur but arthur does things that pisses him off he also recognizes that arthur is a murderer but i think he genuinely kind of likes his president has a good time talking with him and hanging out with him to you know as 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 a and may would and, and i thought his he really handled that performance excellent i thought it was great i i would have loved to have seen more of him but i think he was used perfectly and then at the end he comes back and he's really he comes back in a really aggressive way towards the end and really puts arthur in his place and i think that is the beginning of the end of arthur fleck and why joker the joker persona takes over at the end that's what i think i think i think that there's a moment where he kind of where he's in court and he kind of badmouths the 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 officers and they take that to heart and when he comes back they beat the crap out of him and that is the beginning of the end of Arthur Fleck. After that, after the explosion, Joker is like, I've got to make, I've got to come through. Arthur Fleck is useless. I, it's me now. It is all me. Let's go. Ah ha 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 ha. That was my interpretation of it. Let me know what your interpretation was in the in the comments below. You might like it, you might hate it. You might hate it. You might disagree with me completely. That's also perfectly fine. I look, I don't know if you can tell, but I actually genuinely enjoyed this movie from beginning to end. I really liked it. The musical aspects of it didn't kick in until about 22 minutes, I think, is the first song. 29 minutes, you have your first real musical number, and like 31, 33 minutes is when it's like full-blown Broadway show. But it doesn't, it never really sticks with that. And I've heard a lot of people say that it kind of kills the tone of the movie, the flow of the movie. I, did, I, I bought in from the beginning of it. I was kind of in. I like the use of songs. I would say one or two of the songs might could have been a little bit shorter maybe, but for the most part, I really enjoyed it. Harley Quinn, probably underutilized in it. But again, if she's just a part of his of his psychosis, I don't have I think she was used fine in it. I think getting someone to Lady Gaga's degree, she you know, she elevated some of the singing. She doesn't do a lot of it, but she elevates a lot of it. I just had a lot of I, it's weird to say a lot of fun. It did. It felt like it felt like how the Penguin show feels like an extension of the Batman. This feels kind of like an extension of the Joker. Rob said that on the live stream. I completely agree with him. This feels more like just a continuation, like a PS. This this is how it how it goes. So with that, that so I don't know if it's as it's not probably not as good as the first one, but the musical stuff. It was nice to see them take a chance, take a risk, and kind of do some evolution there and make a change. I like that. I enjoyed the movie. Like I said, it begins with animation, then we get into Arkham, we see that he's there, and then he meets he meets Har he meets Lee Lee Quinzel, and he, there's someone else, Ricky, who kind of wants to be with him. So you see a lot of people who kind of like really gravitate to Arthur. He's someone that people really like to gravitate to. Uh, how he is with the officers they kind of think he's a dick and a clown and tells bad jokes but they, they don't hate him too much until the, the episode at the end and then you see him and, and lee's romance kind of blossom through song and they sing a lot and she really wants to be with him you find out that she is she did go to med school she could be a doctor um but she's not she put herself in there so she could she could meet joker so they kind of stuck with harley quinn like you know an elseworlds version of harley quinn i thought that really worked it, it didn't take away much from uh from the comics or animated series or the first movie as much as i think some people are saying or that i expected it to i think 
I think maybe because I was like, oh, this is all in his mind because so much of the first movie is all on his mind. But it was great to see Mr. Puddles come back. Um, and that really, that's kind of, and I think that, you know, I said, I said that the guards beating him was the beginning of the end, but I think Puddles' testimony was the beginning of the end, truly, because he kind of hits the soft spot of Arthur. And that's when Arthur's like, I don't want to be Joker anymore. He realized he was the only friend that he had. And he's like, I don't want to be Joker anymore. And it was that moment. He was the, he was the sensitive soul that got through to this murderer. And it was great. It was great seeing him as he beats back. She was great in her little in her role, minor role, but you kind of recapping her point of view from the first movie. I thought that was all done well. I thought the court stuff was done well. I thought getting to the court stuff was done well. I like the idea that they made a TV movie about him, and uh, you know he's like, was it good? And Harley Quinn's like, it was great. And uh, and Zazie Beetz is like, it was awful. And he was like, what? And she goes, no, it was great. It was a great little moment with Harley Quinn and and Joker. I I thought the romance kind of got. I, here's part of the reason why I think she's all in his head too is because their romance happens so fast. She's obviously obsessed with him, blah, blah, blah. But it just happens so fast the way it escalates and then the music stuff is all great. But that's all in his mind. There's so much of it that's in his mind. And I, I do think that she is, unlike in the first movie, I think she is co- completely constructed in his mind to kind of even him out. Whereas Joker is back there and he's the one that eventually takes over, like I said. But all in all, I I did enjoy the movie. I enjoyed going back to the steps. I liked when we saw Gotham, when we finally go outside and see Gotham. I was like, oh, man, yeah, I like this. I like this. One last bit I have to say, though, is this is the best looking movie of the year. Bar none. Bar none. This is the best looking movie of the year. I said that about Joker 1. I thought it was a beautifully shot film. Lauren Scher kicked ass on this one again. It's a beautifully shot film. From the musical numbers are obviously sensational. But the courtroom stuff looks great. The the Arkham Asylum stuff is just wonderfully shot. Beautifully lit. Everything about it is phenomenal. It looks so great. Every frame is a friggin' painting. And I love it. And if you don't like the movie, at least watch. Or you don't even want to watch the movie, give it a shot just for that. Put it on mute. Play like your favorite CD. Do you still play CD? Put on Spotify, Apple, whatever the hell you have. Put on Spotify and listen to some music. And just look at the visuals because it's visually outstanding. Joaquin Phoenix, though, brilliant. Per- Brendan Gleeson, like I said, brilliant performance. Joaquin Phoenix, just top-notch performance. In the courtroom, there's a point where he fires his lawyer and, be- and becomes... His own lawyer. He represents himself. And he puts on the old, well, I'm no big city lawyer accent the whole time until Puddles. But he just does this. And it is, he's so committed. He's so good. I I know he can't win an Oscar again for it. But I don't know if I've seen a better performance this year. I haven't seen all the movies this year. But I haven't seen a better performance this year. I thought he was phenomenal in it. That's my take. I'm Joker Folia de. I look, I truly enjoyed this movie. I know I am in the vast minority of people who did, but I took it as this movie, who knows, maybe only like the courtroom stuff and the Arkham stuff, like the like the the, the officers in Arkham and the courtroom is the only thing that's happening in real in this. Everything else is in his mind. Or maybe the entire movie is in his mind from that moment, from the great moment of the first Joker ending. Maybe none of this movie even exists. That's going a little bit far, but I do think Harley, the echo. My shadow, my echo, and me, all present in this. I think that was a very poignant line to have at the end of the movie. And it really, really manifests itself in this. And if you listen closely, I think those are the answers you're looking for. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on Joker. Folia de in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Ha, 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 ha.